Welcome back to the King of Hearts podcast hosted by me, Kiara King. Today's episode is actually going to be a little bit of a life update. I feel like I haven't really given you an update on what's been happening in my life since, well, me and my ex broke up like a month and a half ago, only like two months. What else has been happening? I've been traveling so much and I thought I'd just tell you like what's been happening, how I've been feeling what I've been doing, how I've been processing the breakup too. If you love me, let me fly away. Maybe I'll come back to you. Maybe I won't. It's been up and down. I'll, I'll tell you that much. It's been really up and down. I've been, I think with me, I'm such a, when I break up with someone or like when I'm going through a breakup, I'm such a like forget about it and like denial. And I feel like I did the retreat in Mexico and definitely healed that. But when I came back to London, I definitely feel like you can't heal through a whole breakup in a week. Like you can't. I went to Mexico for like what, 12 days? You can't heal through a breakup in 12 days. I'm really sorry. No matter how much healing you're doing, no matter how much yoga and meditation you can do, it doesn't take 12 days. Like it takes time. And I thought like, oh yeah, I'm going to be healed when I come back to London and like start working again. But no, I was not. <laughs> I was still going through it for sure I actually joined a gym that's that's really cool I've been going to the gym recently not so much <laughs> um I got into a really good routine when I got back from Mexico of like waking up at 7 30 every morning and I have kind of stuck to that but it's I've definitely been drinking again and that's not been so good because I definitely found that I've been drinking to escape wanting to feel the darkness of my breakup or like the pain from my breakup and like I guess like running away from it and that's never a good thing to do so I'm telling you this from my own perspective and my own experience because I'm literally going through it now don't drink when you're going through a breakup and don't try and like run away from the pain because the pain's inevitable like breakups are shit everyone knows that you know that I know that but like I'm such a <laughs> deny till I die I, I will ignore the fact that I've just been through a breakup and pretend everything's fine when it's not but the problem with doing that is that you then in the long term it's like you know putting a plaster over a wound that hasn't been cleaned and the longer you leave that wound not being cleaned, the wound's actually going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and actually it's going to be harder to heal that wound in the long term if you don't actually just rip off the band-aid and clean that wound so I have decided I stopped drinking probably like when I stopped drinking like a week ago just because I went to Rome with my best friend and she was sick so she was on antibiotics and so we didn't drink when we were in Rome and I was so I had like one Aperol spritz and it kind of like you know when you have one and you're like Oh shit like I want another one and then you have another one and then you have another one and you end up partying till 5 a.m like that was me probably the last three weeks of just like also going to events all the time with what I do for work like brand events this event that event and there's alcohol free alcohol every single time you go so it's like so easy to just drink and it's so easy to just numb the pain and numb the emotions when you know that's not good for you and you know that's not going to help in the long term, but in the moment you're just like, oh, I just don't want to think, like, I just want to forget. I don't want to be in pain, but then you automatically are in pain the next day because you're hungover and you're, you know, alcohol is a depressant. Like it makes you depressed. And the next day, instead of just being hungover, I would just hair of the dog it. If you don't know what hair of the dog is, you just drink again. And I did that and it was a little bit toxic and I thought I was fine, but I don't think I actually was because no one drinks every day that's not going through something. <laughs> and uh, I found myself, I was craving McDonald's and sugar and sweets and like all these like toxic things for my body. I was craving because it's honestly just like an emotional thing. Like you wanna eat sugar and eat chocolate and eat crisps because you wanna fill a void emotionally. 
So I found myself and I was aware that I was doing that a lot more. And I was like, oh shit, no, I'm going back downhill and I can't be doing that. So I actually just like decided, well, someone helped me realize, I'm not going to say their name, but help me realize that maybe I shouldn't be doing that and I should heal. Hashtag healing Kiara. <laughs> so I am not drinking anymore. I'm not an alcoholic, okay? I don't want to say I'm an alcoholic because I'm not, but I'm a very good social drinker. And in this industry, in social media, there's so many events every day. It's just easy to drink every day because Every day, everyone else is drinking. So you're like, oh, this is normal. But it's not normal, okay? It's not normal to drink every day, okay? I promise. <laughs> it's been a week and I've just gone teetotal. I have been still eating sugar and sweets and stuff just because like emotionally, it's it's hard when I'm like going through these processing, these like breakup emotions of like, okay, shit, that person's not going to be in my life anymore. And like, you know, you think you're fine. And then it's like almost a breakup is like one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, three steps back, two steps forward, one step back. And it's never linear. And I just was like, oh, it's fine. Like, we're broken up now. La la la. Like I'll be fine. But it's never going to be fine, especially in the first like few months. So I think it's just, I need to be kinder to myself. If you're going through a breakup right now and you feel like you're also self-sabotaging by not dealing with it like going out and drinking it's fine I'm not saying like don't go out it's fine to go out and drink have a drink with like friends and stuff but like know why you're going out for a drink with friends like are you going out for a drink with your girlfriends because you generally would just want to have a good time with your girlfriends or are you going out for a drink with your girlfriends or guy friends because you want to escape the feelings of a breakup and I found that I was drinking with my friends to escape the fact that I was going through a breakup. So yeah, it's kind of, I feel like I'm psychoanalyzing myself, but I do that all the time. But yeah, that's kind of an update. I've been trapped. And also that's another thing Like, I have had so many brand trips. I went to Saint-Tropez with a brand. I went to Monaco with a brand. And the next few weeks are going to be insane. Like I'm going to Monaco Formula One, which I've never been to in my life. And I'm like, what the hell? And they're literally paying me to go. And I'm like, oh my God, like I literally manifested this. I manifested it. That's another thing. I've been manifesting a lot recently. As much as life has been a bit weird and like up and down, like breakup wise and emotionally, I definitely have been manifesting so many good things in my life too, like work wise. I've just been like, oh, I remember going to Monaco for a football game with a brand. And then I was in Monaco and I was like, oh, I want to go back to Monaco for Formula One. Like I've never done Formula One. And literally last week, my manager messaged me. He was like, so we got you a brand deal with Formula One to go to Monaco for the Formula One. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Like I literally manifested it. So I'm going to Monaco. But before that, I'm going to Mallorca with Pandora. And then after that, this is another thing. I'm going to Istanbul, going back to Turkey on the 27th of this month of May. So I'm a little bit anxious and nervous to go back to Istanbul I can't lie like I haven't been back to Istanbul since me and my my ex broke up and literally all I know of Turkey is my ex-boyfriend like because he showed me it so I'm actually going with my family so it's not going to be as difficult like I'm not going on my own I'm going to be with my mom my stepdad my brother but I'm just a bit I think anyone would be a bit nervous to go back to the place where all your memories of your ex are like everything like where he took me to restaurants and like holidays like we're only going to be in Istanbul but yeah it's, it's not going to be easy I can't lie am I looking forward to it yes I'm looking forward to eating the food for sure but I don't know if I'm looking forward to feeling the memories but maybe I just need to go back to like actually feel the sadness too I know that sounds really like dark but I think it's necessary to go back to that place in order to heal the wounds that were created not necessarily by him but just the memories of the relationship yeah and I also want to see my dog blue I haven't seen him in months and it would be so nice to see him if you don't know who blue is blue is the dog that me and my ex got together well it's his dog but we kind of raised him together so yeah but that's kind of my life update honestly it's it's 
nothing's ever perfect. And I think online, I also definitely tried to like show that I was super happy, maybe to prove to myself and to others that I was like putting a smile on my face. But this week's mental health awareness week, I don't know when this episode's going to come out, but currently as I'm recording this, it's mental health awareness week. And it's just, it actually brought me back into perspective of like, it's okay. It's okay to like feel like shit. You know, yesterday I was literally bawling my eyes out for probably two hours straight. That's a long time to be crying. Like both of my pillows in my bed were just soaking wet with tears because I was just sad, you know, losing someone that you love and care about after sharing your entire life with that person's hard. Like, so yeah, I was sad. Yeah, I was. And I didn't answer my phone. I told my managers not to speak to me. I didn't check my phone. My mom and my dad were really worried about me. But like, it's part of the process. I'm not going to be happy Kiara all the time. And I don't expect you to be happy all the time. I don't expect anyone to be happy. And I feel like there's this pressure all the time. Like you have to be happy. You have to be smiling. You have to be happy Kiara. You have to put on a brave face. And it's like, actually, I don't have to. It's just a pressure that is from coming from the outside, but it doesn't exist. Like it's okay to cry for two hours and soak your pillow with tears. That's fine. It's actually healing. It's actually good for you to do that. It's so good to release. And I feel like there was such a block inside where it's just like, you know, it just like builds, the pressure builds, it builds, it builds, it builds, it builds. And you don't cry and you just like let it build and build and build until finally the steam comes off the pot and you can't hold it in anymore. And I was just, you know, I was just a bit sad. A bit, I mean, a lot. I was a lot sad. And that's okay. You know, that's normal. I'm going through a breakup. Like, let's be honest here but what's been really nice is actually distracting myself with work and like my friends and my family just like just mainly work's been distracting me I've had so many photo shoots like I've had so many events going on like I actually really haven't had time to like think but the time that I do have to think is a little bit sad sometimes as it would be and yeah I'm just like dealing it with it in my own way and as I said every day is up and down and it doesn't help with what I do for a living like with social media every day is so different so I don't actually have a routine so that also kind of destabilizes my emotions because I wake up whenever I want to wake up but I've been really strict with trying to wake up early in the morning like 7 30 in the morning I'm not gonna lie have been slacking on exercise I have been po- I was posting on my Instagram stories like a few weeks ago when I got back from Mexico being like guys it's fitness girl era Kiara is back like I'm gonna be in the gym every day and I was for like a week a week yes (laughs) but I am coming back okay I didn't want to go this week I'm not gonna lie I did go last week once or twice but this week has just been it's been hard emotionally I'm not gonna lie it's been really tough like the last four days have been really 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 tough for me emotionally so I just haven't been wanting to go to the gym and I know that's the one thing I should be doing to make my serotonin levels go up but I haven't and that's okay I'm not gonna beat myself up about it and that's another thing like don't beat yourself up oh no I didn't go to the gym today oh my god I'm so bad oh my god I didn't meditate today oh my god I'm so bad it's like it's okay it's fine you're going to be fine as long as you recognize that you just needed some time to be not okay. Tomorrow's a new day. You're going to wake up in the morning and maybe tomorrow you're going to decide, okay, I'm going to go to the gym today or okay, I'm going to sit and meditate for 15 minutes because I know it's going to be good for me. Okay, I'm going to eat scrambled eggs and, and vegetables instead of a chocolate pan au chocolat, you know? But yeah, that's kind of where my head's been at recently it's been really up and down and really side to side left to right forwards and backwards but I think this is part of life and I think the the stage that I'm at in my breakup I have to also remind myself we literally broke up like a month and a half ago that's not a long time and I feel like I love to rush healing and you can't rush healing you can't rush it you have to just like roll with the punches and you know when the tide comes in and it pulls out it's always you know like a pendulum like one day you're fine the next day you're not and then slowly 
over time, the pendulum stops swinging so hard and you end up back in equilibrium and you end up not feeling so happy and so sad. So like, so polar opposite. Cause that's how I'm feeling. Like some days I'm so happy. And then next I'm so sad. And I'm not saying, I don't think I have bipolar or anything. I, I don't think it's that to that extreme, but I'm just because my emotions are so strong r- right now, there's no balance in my head. So yeah, that's, that's how I've been feeling. This is my little life update. And I hope you understand how I'm feeling and you resonate with how I'm feeling. And maybe if you're also going through this, it's okay. It's fine. You're not alone. Because I'm definitely going through it. And I don't have to always put a smile on my face if I don't want to. That's another thing. I'm not going to like people please anymore. If someone asks me, oh my God, are you okay? I'm going to be like, actually, (laughs) that's a funny story. Actually, I was in a a cab ride yesterday I got in a black cab to mine and the driver the first thing he said to me and I was like of course the universe does this to me like just does this to me the cab driver was like so how are you I just like laughed and then I started crying and he was like ah okay he's like I've been a taxi driver for 25 years and every time I ask that question when I hear someone sigh before they answer you know it's they're not good And so, yeah, I literally burst into tears in front of this taxi driver. And we basically had a therapy session for half an hour. I basically told him my whole life story and he was just giving me advice. Like he was giving advice to his own daughter. And it was actually really sweet. He was like this Essex guy. And he was just telling me like, babes, like, just forget about it. Like life's too short. You're 25. Just enjoy your life. Go out with the girls. Get drunk. Have fun. And I was like, I'm not having fun. I'm not having fun. I'm drinking because I'm sad. And he's like, babes, just chill out. Life's too short. Do you know what I mean? I was like, so I needed a bit of that energy because life really is too short. You know, we only live once. So I get it's okay to be sad, but let's not wallow in our sadness either. Like, let's put life into a bit of perspective. I'm not dying here. I'm not sick. You know, there's worse things happening in the world. Like, I'm just going through a freaking breakup. Like, let's be real. I'm going to get over it. We're all going to get over it. He's going to get over it. We're all going to move on and we're all going to be happy. And there are going to be moments of happiness within the sadness too. It's not going to just be sadness, sadness, sadness. Like there's going to be moments where it's happy and moments where it's sad. That's part of life. You can't have light without dark. Like that that wouldn't be life. If it was happy all the time, that's not life. It's plastic. It's not real. Like social media, everything's always happy, 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 happy. But we all know that's not real. Social media is not real and it's always showing highlights of life. But if we were to show the darkness and the sadness, which is what I'm trying to do a bit more of now, especially with Mental Health Awareness Week, is to bring a bit of life back into social media and like a bit of truth back into social media, especially with a podcast as well. I feel like it's been really nice for me to like share actually how I feel because people, you don't actually know how I actually feel or how I actually am as a person. All you see is six seconds of my face just making stupid jokes or talking about boys where, yeah, you know, I do put a lot of emphasis on relationships because that is what I like to talk about. But also the relationship with myself, I feel like I haven't spoken much about, like, which I would love to talk about it more in in depth in the next few episodes in, in the future. But There is more to me than my relationships, that's for sure, you know? Obviously, it's so fun to talk about relationships. They're so juicy. It's like, you know, gossipy. We all have a bit of gossip, but that's why people like to watch me because it's all juicy gossip. But at the end of the day, like, I am also an individual person despite relationships, and I am my own person, have my own interests and hobbies. But yeah. We're just going to take a pause there, and we'll be back after this break. So this week's quote of the week, it's not very controversial, but it's a quote. And I feel like it sets in really well with what I'm talking about this episode. So this week's quote of the week is, I forgive myself for searching for love when it's been right here this entire time. And this is where I will say that all the Disney movies have been lying to us. It's so true that the love 
that you wish to find in someone else has always been inside of you. We always, I think as girls especially, we watched like Disney movies like Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella. And we then grow up to think that there's this Prince Charming that's gonna come and save us from all our problems and is gonna complete us. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that that's complete bullshit. And I'm only 25, okay? But even now, I can definitely tell you that the more I've loved myself in the past, like obviously it's a constant journey. Like, of course, I don't fully love myself now, especially in the circumstances that I am in now, going through like, you know, breakup and stuff. I found the moments where I've loved myself the most and trusted myself the most and respected myself the most is when I've attracted people who also love themselves, respect themselves and trust themselves because you are a magnet of everything that you are. You attract everything that you are. So if you say, oh my God, I was in a relationship with the most narcissistic, toxic guy in the whole world, chances are baby girl, you probably had very similar qualities to the person that you attracted because you physically cannot attract a partner who's in a different you know, frequency to you. You always attract people of the same frequency. And I found when I love myself more, I'm attracting other people who love themselves more and it's less codependent. It's just more healthy, you know? And I just find that for so long, I was searching outside of myself for love and being like, oh my God, my soulmate's gonna come and like, you know, change my life. My soulmate, Prince Charming's gonna come and complete me because I believed I wasn't complete. But that's so not true. You are complete. Like everything inside you is complete. We think that we're like half a heart and someone else is gonna come and bring the other half and then you're gonna be whole, but it's not true. You are whole the way you are. When the moment I realized that actually was, I know it can sound a bit sad because it's like, oh, there's no like soulmate coming to save me from my problems. It's actually really good to know because in a relationship, once that honeymoon stage is over, because it will be, as much as you can love someone so much, they are not gonna fix all your problems for you. You're gonna wake up one day and you're gonna be like, why do I still feel like a lack inside of me? Even though I have the perfect person next to me, why do I still feel a lack inside of me? It's because it's not about the relationship. It's about you. It's about the relationship with yourself. And for me, I had so many insecurities and like I never felt good enough. And that really affected my relationships because then, you know, this perfect person comes in and I'm like, well, they're not good enough. But that's because everything is a mirror about how you feel about yourself. Until you love yourself fully, and I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm sitting here right now. I am not there yet. I do not love myself yet. Until the day I do, I'm gonna keep attracting people that also don't love themselves yet. But then when I do love myself, which takes time, it takes self-care, it takes put, setting boundaries for yourself, it takes respecting yourself more, it takes trusting yourself more when you when you go out and learn to say no to people, when you sacrifice things that you should be doing with things that you want to be doing. Like, I actually want to go and have a bath tonight, but I've got an event I've got to go to. And I've got things to go to, and I've got friends I need to see. But actually, it's about saying no more, I would say, the journey to self-love and, and setting boundaries of like, okay, you know what? I'm not gonna be on my phone after nine o'clock because I respect myself that I'm not gonna destroy my mental health by doom scrolling at 11 p.m. at night before I go to bed when I know in the short term it's going to be good for me because the dopamine is going to hit and I'm just going to scroll on TikTok and Instagram and that's going to like hit the dopamine serotonin but long term I don't get a good night's sleep and what's more important when you really love yourself you want to nourish yourself that's another thing like when you really love yourself you don't want to eat sugar when you really love yourself you don't want to damage your body with alcohol and drugs when you really love yourself, you don't wanna hang around people who gossip all the time because gossip is also really toxic. And obviously I'm preaching it as if I know what I'm talking about. I, you know, 
I can't take my own advice either. So I can sit here and be like, do this, do that. I'm not saying do this, do that. But I know the way to get to where I want to be is just so much easier said than done. It's so much easier said than done to say, oh, I'm going to wake up at 7.30 in the morning and go to the gym every day. It's just so much easier said than done. I don't know why this is as well. It's like, why are all the good things in life so difficult? Like, why does a burger taste nicer than a salad? Why does it taste nicer than a salad? Why? Why do fries taste nicer than fruit? Why do sweets and chocolate taste nicer than an acai bowl or like whatever it is that's healthy? Because I think we've just grown and been conditioned that sugar and, and all these toxins that we put in our life and all of that is fine, but it's not. And it's actually damaging and toxifying your brain and your body. And yeah, so I'm going to try to do that. I don't know if I'm going to succeed, but I'm going to try. I have joined a gym, so I am in the process of it. And I'm cutting out like sugar, not in a diet way. And I, I don't want you to think that I'm doing this in a diet. I'm super happy with my body. And I, I love the way I look, not in a narcissistic way, but like I'm happy with how I look. And, you know, I love my body for the way it is. I don't want to lose any weight, but it's more like for my mind. When I eat sugar, I get those like sugar highs and then you crash and then you want more sugar. And then you want alcohol and then you crash. But then you want it again because it's addictive. But I think cutting that out of your life is actually really good self-care work and will help you on the journey to love yourself more and love myself more. And I definitely need to do that. I'm not going to become a saint in a day, but I'm trying. Rome wasn't built in a day. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was quite, quite a lot to unpack. But if you're going to take anything from today is, you know, it's okay if you're not feeling good. Don't trust social media with everyone being happy, including myself, because I can post that I'm happy online when I'm actually not. So take it from me. None of it's real. And just take care of yourself. And be patient with yourself and be kind to yourself and try not to grab that bag of sweets at Tesco's and the chocolate because it's just it's an emotional thing. You just want to eat it because you're feeling sad. Try and eat some fruit instead. But again, I, I don't practice what I preach. So <laughs> I love you a lot and I hope you're okay. And I'm sending you so much love. And I'll see you next week. And if you would like to subscribe as well or follow the pod for more episodes to be kept up in the loop of what's going on in my life and love and relationships in general, please do hit a like, subscribe button and follow. And if you can also review the, the show, it would be great. Anyway, I love you. Bye. Maybe I won't.